What those models show is that perhaps as early as 2060, we might have a 4 degree rise in temperature worldwide. It might be as late as 2100, and indeed of all the models they looked at, only one indicated 4 degrees was reached a little bit after 2100. What we're not looking at is a particular date. It's somewhere likely to be, if we don't, uh, we're not successful at Copenhagen, between 2060 and 2100. But we're looking at a 4 degree world. And the hottest days, up to 10 degrees to 12 degrees for eastern North America. And to give you an idea of that, the hottest day in New York typically is about 39 degrees. So that would take New York up to uh, somewhere in the region of 50 degrees um, on the hottest day. Again, largely unbearable. If we get to four degrees, we might expect the tundra to melt, the rotting of the vegetation will generate more methane, and this will add yet more and fuel the, the, um, the actual climate change increases by putting more greenhouse gases up into the atmosphere. Ocean acidification, not time to talk about it, dramatic problem anyway. The oceans are as acid as they've been for 25 million years. If this happens, they'll be as acid as they've been for 400 million years. Ice melt will mean that the reserves that are stored in glaciers are not going to be there and risks to large areas of the Amazon forest. Tropical cyclones more intense. What more can I say? This is disastrous if it happens. We've got to meet that two degree target. It won't be easy, but we've got to do it. So with pleasure I now pass over to the people who are charged with doing it. I just have to pose the problems. They have to solve them. The number of people suffering from severe water shortages will rise under a four degree world, eightfold to around uh, four uh, billion. Uh, increased drought and desertification is greatly going to reduce the available food too for a rising population. So you've got a scissors effect there of quite dramatic uh, proportions. Secondly, is the dangers of mass uh, migration. We already see the tensions around the world of some 200 million people uh, on the move. Uh, the figures that you can extrapolate from this uh, work suggests that there will be further unprecedented mass migration uh, of some further 150 to 200 million people on the move. Thirdly, the uh, dangers of increased pressure and conflict. One of the most dangerous parts of the world is obviously the Middle East. 5% uh, of the world's population live in the Middle East. They have access to 1% of the world's water. Uh, those sorts of strains and stresses can only be exacerbated by uh, the uh, trends that we've seen here. If you think about the issues that I've just raised in terms of security, uh, migration, and conflict, you can see that a four degrees world is one in which the UN Security Council is going to be dominated by questions related to climate uh, change. I don't think this thing is a done deal at all, far from it. We could fail at Copenhagen, absolutely we could, but I think there are also reasons for hope, and I think it's important to say that. So we need to turn around the rise, in the, the inexorable rise in carbon emissions. We cannot let Copenhagen just pass people by. My, my biggest worry has always been that this would be just like any other summit. It would come and go, uh, it would be an item on Newsnight, uh, and then uh, and people wouldn't worry about it. It needs to be more than that. That is why not just myself, the Prime Minister, David, will be making the case here and around the world uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, I think we can get a deal that prevents dangerous climate change. It requires imagination, it requires uh, leadership, uh, but I think it's doable. Thank you very much.